May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. January 27, 2024, Saturday of the Third Week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David. And when he had come to him, he said to him, Two men were in one city, one wealthy, and the other poor. The wealthy man had very many sheep and oxen. But the poor man had nothing at all, except one little sheep, which he had bought and nourished. And she had grown up before him, together with his children, eating from his bread, and drinking from his cup, and sleeping in his bosom. And she was like a daughter to him. But when a certain traveler had come to the wealthy man, neglecting to take from his own sheep and oxen, so that he might present a feast for that traveler, who had come to him, he took the sheep of the poor man, and he prepared a meal for the man who had come to him. Then David's indignation was enraged exceedingly against that man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this is a son of death. He shall restore the sheep fourfold, because he did this word, and he did not take pity. But Nathan said to David, You are that man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. For this reason, the sword shall not withdraw from your house, even perpetually, because you have despised me, and you have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite, so that she may be your wife. And so, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up over you an evil from your own house. And I will take your wives away before your eyes, and I will give them to your neighbor. And he will sleep with your wives in the sight of this son. For you acted secretly, but I will do this word in the sight of all of Israel, and in the sight of the Son. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord has also taken away your sin. You shall not die. Yet truly, because you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, because of this word, the son who was born to you, dying he shall die. And Nathan returned to his own house. And the Lord struck the little one, whom the wife of Uriah had borne to David, and he was despaired of. And David begged the Lord on behalf of the little one. And David fasted strictly, and entering alone, he lay upon the ground. Then the elders of his house came, urging him to rise up from the ground. And he was not willing, nor would he eat a meal with them. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is Create a clean heart in me, O God. Create a clean heart in me, O God, and renew a right spirit within my bowels. Cast me not away from your face, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and strengthen me with a perfect spirit. I will teach the unjust your ways, and the wicked shall be converted to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Deliver me from blood, O God, you God of my salvation, and my tongue shall extol your justice. O Lord, you will open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And on that day, when evening had arrived, he said to them, Let us cross over. And dismissing the crowd, they brought him, so that he was in one boat, and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm occurred, and the waves broke over the boat, so that the boat was being filled. And he was in the stern of the boat, sleeping on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, 
Does it not concern you that we are perishing? And rising up, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Silence! Be still! And the wind ceased, and a great tranquility occurred. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still lack faith? And they were struck with a great fear. And they said to one another, Who do you think this is, that both wind and sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How deeply do you trust Jesus in the storms of your life, and how can you strengthen that trust to find peace amid challenges? Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. Mark 4, verses 36 to 38. Throughout our lives, we can be assured that at some point we will encounter a storm. Not just a physical storm, but a spiritual one. It may come in the form of a tragic event, a deep wound inflicted by another, the effects of our own sin, or some other painful experience. And for many people, this will happen more than once. When such a storm is encountered in life, it may seem as if Jesus is asleep and not readily available to help us through. When this happens, the message of the Gospel above is very helpful to prayerfully ponder. As this Gospel passage continues, we read that the disciples, in a panic, woke up Jesus and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus got up, addressed the storm and said, Quiet! Be still. And all was calm. He then said to the disciples, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? The disciples were left in amazement and wonder. The key is faith. When we face a storm in life, we must have faith. But what does that mean? It means that we must know, with a deep certitude, that Jesus is in fact always with us. We must know, with a deep certitude, that if we place all our trust and hope in him, he will never abandon us. We must know, with a deep certitude, that every storm will ultimately pass, and that peace and calm will ensue. Facing the storms in life with faith is transforming. And often, Jesus appears to be asleep for a reason. The reason is that, he wants us to trust. Too often, we turn our eyes to the storm itself and allow fear and anxiety to dominate our lives. But every storm we encounter is an opportunity to trust him on a new and deeper level. If life were always easy and consoling, then we would have little reason to trust deeply. Therefore, every storm must be seen as an opportunity for tremendous grace as we place all our trust in Jesus, despite how things immediately appear. Reflect today upon how deep and sustaining your own faith in Christ truly is. Do you trust him no matter what? Are you able to trust him when all seems lost, when life is difficult, and when confusion tempts you? Prepare now for the next such storm you may face and resolve to use that opportunity as a moment in which your faith is made manifest and becomes the stabilizing force of your life. Let us pray. My sleeping Lord, help me to always place all my trust in you, no matter what the circumstances are in my life at every moment. Strengthen my faith, especially during those times when I face challenges and temptations. May I never doubt that you are there with me, leading me, and keeping me close to your merciful heart. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. 
Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.